All right, we've put it off long enough here on the channel. It is time for us to collectively draft our first team of the 2024 season and, of course, lay the groundwork for finding our generation, Sky Moore. It's ship chasing. Let's go. Pat Fryer Helmo. <laughs> This is why I'm hot. Anita hand, hand job. Fix your sight. Jamar. <laughs> Alpha play chase. <laughs> Are you <laughs> kidding me? Can you <laughs> Tony? You can't handle the heat. See, it looks like we're finally at this point. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> wow. Wow. The chat is frothy for a draft tonight. David already coming in hot. He just wants Pat and I to put our hands up. And let Gretch take the wheel. <laughs> I'm, to it. I'm very open to it. <laughs> Me too, actually. But I'm Pat, not. I'm I'm closed <laughs> off to it. I don't like this idea. Pat, I was gonna sit say? back and let you guys do it tonight. I no, I'm taking this comment to heart. I think it means we're overexposed. If if, if he's already sick of seeing us draft, I mean that that means we drafted <laughs> way too March, much. Fucking March, man. <laughs> it's not good. What's funny is Pat, have you done? How many drafts on stream have you done? It can't None. be that many. I don't think I've done any big board drafts on stream. Yeah, so That's you're just talking about me, David. You <laughs> well, want these guys to do? <laughs> I've been doing plenty of content. It's all just uh, just conversations, not, that not drafts. That fucking beat guy does so many streams. Yeah. Good God. <laughs> well, you know what David's probably referring to? It's uh, Pat's rankings are out there drafting for a lot of people. And so right. he... Uh, it is that is a fun dynamic though, where Pat gets to say he wants a guy that's not uh, the top of the queue in his rank, so we can have that play out as well. I always, uh, yeah. Although you know what, it's just a way for me to update the ranks. That's all. Okay. That's right. <laughs> I will say, you like when I hear you like uh, on shows or even with us or when you're talking with the legendary upside guys, you're you're very fluid with like, oh, I'm gonna adjust this guy right now. Like you use that real time feedback to inform your stuff. I do, and I mean, I think there's you know, an element here where we want to be mixing it up and drafting different guys and not just drafting the same team over and over and over. So it's kind of like, as long as I'm consistently kind of just like, even if it's just tinkering, like good, you know what I mean? Because um, we should be kind of mixing up the bets in certain ways, but also like, yeah, some of the stuff is we, as we learn more information, I'm trying to bake it in right away. I think that's a really good point. I mean, I was talking to Andy <laughs> so on the club, and he's been auto-drafting big boards. But one thing he knows and he does from his experience doing the dailies is layering in some like light randomness to the ranks as you do batches of auto-drafts. So you're not just getting the one guy, the leg up ranks are four spots higher than ADP because you don't want to show up with 45% of that guy. That's not actually right. reflective of the confidence bet you're making. So I think tinkering those makes a ton of sense for people who are using them as gospel. Right. And I go through, I mean, we update them every day and I, I go through and I um, will make changes where I'm just like, yeah, this is these, this is pretty flat. And we've actually gotten a little bit out of line with, you know, ADP on this player and kind of move them up to reflect. I don't want the rankings to reflect like massive stands on players for an entire uh, like pre-draft period, for example, that we don't really have, you know, like you shouldn't have any of, you know, I don't know, like, Brandon Ayuk or something like that's not how we feel. So if, if the rankings were giving you that, we would, I would want to adjust that at some point in the period. Yeah. No, Brandon, Ayuk. that's just a Davis Matic uh, draft <laughs> strategy for ideological reasons. Uh, Gretch, you've been putting out some uh, good podcasts with Sean. I got to listen to the Marquise Brown episode. Haven't got a chance to listen to the Keenan one yet. Uh, any other thoughts for you kind of as the free agency uh, dust is fully settled? No, we just we, we did a few last week and didn't get to all the moves, so we wanted to hit on some of those this week. Um, I mean, uh, I'm super into like March Madness. That's that's what I'm doing today. Like you guys are already talking about like layering in randomness on on like <laughs> auto drafting best ball. I'm like, are you guys checking out the Texas Colorado State game? Like, are, this is a shit cast, right? We're gonna watch along March Madness. Like, we're gonna be talking about how, how much do you guys get into March Madness? I used to get really into it. I this year I'm pretty. I don't know what's going on. I gotta, I gotta tell you. I I used to be obsessed. Scratch. I was telling Brick on Lulz today. I had a period from like 1995 to 2005 where it was like my favorite sporting event of the year. But I'm like such a completionist that now because I 
don't get to spend much time on it. Like just like picking and choosing my spots doesn't have quite the same appeal to me. Right. For sure. I've been that way with, with it certain years, but this year I got, I got pretty into it. So I'm super excited. I do. Me and some college buddies have an eliminator pool that we've done for, I got the thing open here. We have results in it. 2013 was our first year. So whatever, 11 years. Um, and, and then another buddy brought something that he learned from his, he's in the air force from his air force buddies. Uh, it's called pick six. And so you pick just six teams and you get the points for each round that their seed is. So mm. for, the, for the first round, like if they're a six seed, like I, so I took P- BYU in this, they're a six seed. If they would, <laughs> they would have got six points in the first round. And then the second round, they win that game, they get 12. So they get six times two goes all the way to potentially round six would be the championship. So one seed all the way through wins every game can only get to 21, but like an 11 seed wins two games, they get 33, they get 11 and 22. So there's like, it kind of layers it in like the, that's the, cool. Yeah. What bets do you want to make? Like where, who do you think is going to make a long run? Even just two good wins from a double digit seed is a good number. Um, but obviously, I mean, if you pick the champion, correct. If you pick like a two seed doing the champion, you could get 42 from that. Like that can three be- seeds. Three seeds are pretty fun. Three seeds. Six it's and 11. Slope. Four seed. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if it was a five seed? <laughs> oh, ooh. That's what happened last year. Uh, I think UConn was a five seed. No, they were, they were a four and okay. they played San Diego state. San Diego state was a five. Like it, last year, no. No top three seeds made the final four. It was a four, two fives, and in a like a nine. So anyway, it was crazy for this particular type of bracket last year. But uh, not a good year yeah. to, to take NCAA teams high in Omni, which I'm which I'm pretty sure I did in all the leagues. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, and then there's Omni, so I got a yeah. lot of shit riding on uh, on NCAA tournament. A lot of lot of money, a lot of lot of sticks in the fire. Yeah, actually, I'm going to need to go refresh my uh, memory on what my Omni uh, teams are. I'm pretty I have, sure I have I an Arizona. I have okay, well, that's a good one to have. Yeah. Um. All right, let's do it. Let's draft. Uh, I'm going to hop in a big board draft. Let's get the screen shared, see if we can remember how to do this over here. Uh, wow, you guys were you guys were waiting. Is there an overflow? I mean, that's snap filled. Were you guys sitting on this? Influencer 102 here for us. I don't know if I recognize a lot of these names, though. I see Super Shorty got in here. Actually, th- there must be a big overflow. All right. Gretch, is this your first time seeing yeah. the draft app at the ADPs? Well, I've looked at – I've gone to underdogfantasy.com and looked at rankings to write, like, my targets yeah. per run articles and stuff. I have not drafted. I don't really have context on it. I, I mean, we talked about it a little bit where I, like I realized in real time when we were talking about Drake London that like how high his overall ADP was, even though he was still like wide, he was like wide receiver 26 and his overall ADP was 36, which I see has actually risen a lot since uh, Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Landed there. But like, I, obviously I can do the math and I'm like, oh, so these draft boards are just all receivers in the early rounds. <laughs> like, if you're wide receiver 26 and going 36 overall, then there's only 10 picks in the first three rounds that are not receivers, which is what it was when I wrote it up. And I couldn't believe that. I was shocked. It's wild. I mean, it won't be like that in the summer, you know? Yeah. It will, I think it'll be maybe clo- closer to that than, like, last year. But, yeah. I mean, I think you'll see, so like, Josh Jacobs and stuff. Greg, well, where are you at? Do you have a take on the on the one, too? Because I, I, I think Tyree say- Kill should be the wide receiver one. Okay. Yeah, Pretty comfortably, he- actually. He's been a lot better than CD Lamb. CD Lamb like broke out last year. Tyreek Hill was still way better. I think if Tyreek Hill didn't get hurt, he would easily be going ahead of CD Lamb. Yeah. I will say I'm pretty sure I got Tyreek at like 1 5 or 1 6 the other day. Like you're starting to see some crazy stuff. Like Bijan will now go Bijan's 2 or 3 up. in a lot of these. Um obviously Jefferson is one of the fallers. Lamb though rarely falls out of the top three. So that's pretty unusual, I feel like, to see Lamb at 1-4 in these. Yeah, my general take on Tyreek versus Lamb is that I want both. And so I've just generally yeah. been in line with ADP. But I do like – I th- I would – if you m- had me make ADP, I would put Tyreek second as well. That's what I'm yeah. saying, yeah. 
I agree with you. I want to draft Lamb too. He's like his profile was fantastic last year. He's progressed every year in a way that feels like a, a legit. Like Pat, we talked about this like years ago, but like how yards per out run as a stat, like you 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 don't typically see guys just like shoot up. I remember you referencing yeah. Devonte Adams, how he had to like build he up actually a little improved. bit. Yeah, he didn't come out of nowhere. He like he was awful, then like bad, then like okay, then good, then amazing. Yeah. And Lamb was never amazing, or I mean, never awful, but he has like steadily improved in a way that you're like, yeah, he's just getting better every year. And he just had like a kind of a breakout year in 2022, and then an even bigger step forward in like everything in 2023. He does even more per route, he's even more efficient. Everything's like, yeah, this guy's like, and his profile was that coming out of college that he could be a superstar. So, I mean, he. He's legit. I'm not trying to dog him, but Tyree Kill, like, I honestly think if he wasn't inactive, so he missed like a good chunk of the game he got hurt in and then and inactive the next game and was like kind of playing hurt the last couple games. And I mean, still, like, I know he's older, but he's also a freak, dude. That was like a high ankle sprain and he barely missed any time. Like, he might be one of the biggest, like, this, how can this guy play through stuff? You know, some dudes are just like physical freaks, you know? Like, I'm yeah. actually like, kind of feel like Tyree Kill is like less of an injury risk after I saw that last year because that high ankle sprain seemed bad. He missed one game and he was just like back the next week. He, was, he played through it in that game. He came back into that game. It was like, oh, he this dude's out for the year. Yeah. Yeah. This, he's like super flexible or whatever. So, anyway. And his his targets per out run and his his efficiency, all that stuff is just so absurd. It's it's absolutely astronomically absurd. It's like way above everyone else. So. It, yeah, it's it's actually like insane. Like you when you look at like yards per route run, if a guy is in the high twos, that's like ultra elite, you know, kind of Justin Jefferson sort of stuff. Tyreek's been at three point zero seven and three point seven two. The yeah. last two years. That's, that's fucking nuts. It's insane. I wrote that up as whatever 3.72 divided by three point or, or one point, whatever it is, 1.86 or something. I was like, that's two 1.86 seasons, which is a good season. Yeah, those are like yeah. solid, maybe not elite. Like that's like a DK Metcalf year. Right. He had a DK Metcalf year and then another right. one. <laughs> on the same number of routes, he packed it into the same number of routes. <laughs> How do you? It's a li- maybe a little shade to DK, who was at two point zero four last year, one point nine three before that. So it's a little, it's a little, it's it's a not quite a DK Metcalf here, but almost. So some of the we're about to pick in the second round. One of the big drops you have in the leg up rankings is dropping DJ Moore down about ten picks. ADP wise, it's still more Allen Diggs. Uh, your ranks, Diggs, Allen. We got our guy Rashi Rice up here, Olave, Dell. You guys have anything you like? I like playing for the Diggs, Allen. That's one of the reasons why Diggs is, has moved up, because you can do that move. Um, otherwise, we can go. This is a flat spot, so if you guys like any of the receivers. What do you like, Cratch? I really like Rashi, but I could do the Diggs, Allen thing. Let's do Rashi. I mean, Rashi's been the dude that I've been talking up on all the all the stuff. And you mentioned the, the Hollywood show with Sean. I I think I went for like 15 minutes straight talking about Rashi Rice on that podcast. I was like, Sean, you got to stop me, man. You got you to cut in. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, and then we're back on the clock. DJ Moore Olave goes, I've been taking a ton of Tank Dell in this range. Also like Waddle. For some reason, I just can't bring myself to click digs here, but I'm, I'm open to whatever. Yeah, I'm down with Tank. You like Tank, Gretch? I don't love him here, but I'm I'm down with it. Who do you it. like, Waddle? Take him. No, let's take Tank. Let's take Tank. Yeah, you guys both, uh, you guys both like it. I'm I'm good with it. I think another receiver is the obvious pick. Waddle would have been fine. Diggs would have been fine, but Tank's fine too. I'm I'm yeah. trying to come around on Tank. I, I guess I'm like I'm mildly concerned they might add to the position in the draft, and that part of the reason they were so good, both Tank and Nico, was the lack of competition. Dalton Schultz is not a target earner. And like Noah Brown had like career highs per route, like target earning. Like when that's Robert Woods was horrible. He was horrible in 2022 and he got even worse in 2023. His yards per run runs like 0.9. We were just talking about 
1.8. So Tyreek Hill was four Robert Woods's. <laughs> he was he wasn't just double, you know, one <laughs> something at one point eight. That actually doesn't seem like enough. It, it's, it kind of doesn't. But Robert Woods was and he ran four hundred plus routes. Those routes are gonna get replaced by somebody better than what Robert Woods gave you last year. So there's gonna be some target competition for Nico well, and Tank is sort of my favorite. Brown feeling. was hurt, right? And Dell was hurt. So I think Brown and Brown's re-signed. I think they probably draft someone, but I don't know how early they take someone. Like they could be a mm. third round pick, you know. It's a deep class for sure, but it's not it's the first round guys who I'd be worried about if I'm invested in Tank Dell. I think Tank Dell, given what he showed last year, can keep himself well out ahead of some of these guys who might go like later round two or round three. But do you think part of what he showed last year is just I mean more than just a small part is Stroud, obviously a good chunk. Yes. 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 I mean, so it's like if they add somebody. But it's sort of like Rice, like Rice, like he, so they have yeah, like sure. identical yards per route run, like 2.21 for Rice, 2.22 for Dell. Um, Dell, I mean, to me, like if you just zoom out to the macro, rookie wide receiver comes in, has two plus yards per route run, great quarterback play. Yeah. I'm in. Like yeah. I am in. And I don't think that someone's going like everyone else around the organization knows that as well. Now he has to come back from the injury. The reports on that have been pretty positive. So I'm expecting that that won't be a problem. I guess, you know, we should factor that into a degree, but yeah, I think it's probably him and Nico. And then, you know, if they draft someone, Noah Brown's routes are, are really where, where you would start. Right. And, and again, that Robert Woods had 417 routes. He was, third on the team in routes behind Schultz and, and Nico. He was basically right with Nico in terms of like overall routes. So wow. that's crazy. You're, yeah. He ran a ton of routes poorly. So like, that's where I think the competition has to rise. It's not like John Mechie ran 172 routes. Noah Brown ran 293. He was about 300 and he, his numbers were high. Like he also saw an elevation from the fact he that was like, almost at two yards per route run. Noah Brown was just right. like 1.9 something. A lot of his routes were after Tank went down, and it was like, okay, you got Nico and no one else, you know. Like, so I, I just think like anybody. Could even be before, I remember group. Noah Brown having spike weeks early in the season because because it was like confounding for DFS purposes. He did, yeah. And he, he had also, he had a couple splashes. You're right. He had the massive back back. game the week with the box where they all went off too. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, he went yeah, back he, to back two hundred and fifty yard games in a row. I just looked it up, and that was before Tank's injury. I think you're right, actually. Yeah, it was week nine and ten. Yeah, Tank got her week thirteen. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, it, and that I mean, like, are saying none of this is Stroud. Like Noah Brown, dude. It's it, that's Stroud. That's a hundred percent. Yeah, right. Yeah. I uh, hope he goes. I was gonna see if we could we could maybe have done the Mahomes double stack there, but oh, that dream great. is dead. We could still push Mahomes to five two if we want. Uh, James Cook, Zay, Rome. You want to get your first Rome share, yeah, Rome. Uh, Gretch? Yeah, I do. Let's do it. If, if Pat's saying let's do it, then hell yeah, I want to take Rome in my first draft. The other guy that pops on the screen for me is uh, Trey McBride. Yes. Who, who I think should be – I think should should maybe be the tight end one. I mean, I'm pretty high on – on when I did the targets per run stuff, I came out really high on him. Um. I love that take. One other thing in this dovetails, I just put out a video on my channel, Big Board Strategy Tips, and one that Jacob mentioned that I've been trying to do in my drafts too is to take advantage of how deep this rookie wide receiver class is. Like take a detour away from wide receiver in round four, five, or six because we're going to want to spend some mid-round picks on wide receiver. So like I think I, I said in my video, like I have Andrews and McBride on over 60% of my team so far because like – I love getting this tight end detour here, and McBride is just such a smash. He should not be going. F I mean, it's only five oh two, but fifth round that seems. Yeah. I mean, I, to me, Andrews in the fifth round is absurd. He's the number. Yeah. He's the number one receiver on Baltimore still, in my opinion, and has been. I'm always a little nervous about tight ends who showed it in a season or half a season, like McBride did, because we've been fooled so many times. You know, by the the next big thing at tight end. Um, so like to me, I, I take Andrews over McBride pretty comfortably because he's fucking Andrews. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's, he's like 29, but his he falling off. He's, 
you know. his 2023 is pretty interesting from writing it up. His targets per out run fell substantially. His slot rate spiked. He'd been between 62 and 67% four years in a row was up over 80%. So, I mean, not a massive amount, but they, he's only in line 9.9%. He had been in line over 20%. So like the, the mix with the, with the coordinator change, right? The mix was different. Right. He was in the slot more earning uh, targets at a lower rate per route, which is partially just having Zay Flowers on the roster and better receivers and Odell Beckham there and stuff. His ADOT felt a ton. It's always been double digits every year of his career. It was down to 8.2. That uh, is a little bit of a concern for sure. All of those things were a little bit different for him in 2023. Obviously got hurt, and so we don't have like a total huge sample, but it's at least his his efficiency was still good. He's always been an efficiency stud. Yeah, 1.93 well, yards per route run isn't still that good. far below. Like he was 1.97. No. It's below his career year of I mean, well, his career year was 2.68, but even three years ago, he was at 2.18, which is, you know, that's a decent drop off, but still pretty damn good, especially for a tight end. Right. So there's at least mild concern with him, to your point about there also being some mild concern with McBride. That's why I'm still McBride over him, but I like him in this range too, for sure. My like zoomed out view of tight end is like there's like three or four guys in the whole league who can be like true difference makers of the position and like if you give me one of the guys who has been a difference maker for multiple seasons, I'm going to bet on that guy. Sure. Like I'm still taking a lot of Kelsey and I yeah. know like he could. Yeah. Yeah. Get, but like he, you're getting fourth round Kelsey. It's Kelsey. That's crazy. Yeah. And the thing I can't shake about that Pat too, about like the, the league winning difference making tight end, we used to have to pay right. an, a two, right. three turn pick for that. That was the Waller Kittle year, you know, two years ago where it's like, that's what we were aiming for. Give me a couple spike weeks at the right time, have that ceiling. And it's like, now you can get that in the fourth fit. It's yeah. huge. Dalton Kincaid is not that yet. So I think McBride showed enough. He had a 25.9% targets per route. Yeah, I mean, he was, like, he was a monster in, in that year. Pitts would, would actually qualify for me as well. I, again, I don't know the ADP. So as these tight ends are going off, I'm wondering where this breaks, but those four that we already saw go should not be going as low as they are. They're awesome values. Um, I also got. I, I would take Kittle here and just bully it. I I've done it with the double tap because Kittle's off in here yeah. too. Um, he fits in that group too for me. I'm with you guys. Let's just do it. I don't mind it either because I man I do not like much at tight end mid to late in these. So like locking up two and just being done with it has always felt good. What Honestly, are we gonna Schultz do? Is one of my last guys that I even want to consider. Like I hate having yeah. to go figure it out late. It's bad. Um, what do you guys want? Like, to, um, is this isn't really a, a good QB range? Do do you are there running backs that you consider at this point, or is it those receivers that are not the only? Special? The only quarterback thing is if you really want Kyler, he's not coming back. Um, ADP of eighty six, we pick at ninety five. I think that makes um, sense. Okay, that would be my only thought, unless we like one of these running backs. <clears throat> I mean, I like. David Montgomery is like a safe play for a yeah. zero RB. Let's that's fine. Let's do let's do let's Kyler. Do Kyler. Yeah, yeah. I I did t- you guys I, see when you went back to the 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 grid view? Did you see you, Team Eleven? Do you see yes. a lot of this? No. Uh, th- this is the chat has been going crazy about this for the audio listeners here. Team Eleven uh, just insane. vomiting green like we haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> Jameer Gibbs, Barkley. ETN, Rashad White, Kenneth Walker. I thought we had to throw up the X situation here, but pop the wide receiver cherry at pick 62. Finally took Calvin Ridley there. But uh I can't wait for all these running backs to have a good season in this in this team to finish fourth. <laughs> yeah. Uh shout out to user West Cocaine. Cocaine, I should mention spelled K or C O K A N E. Um our team. <laughs> His name's Wes Cocaine, and he's yes. just railing running backs. Yep. Yes. It all fits. Uh, it sounds like a little kid saying you should uh, do less cocaine. Wes Cocaine, Wes Cocaine. Uh, <laughs> our team, Tyreek Hill, Rashi Rice, Take Dell, Roma Dunze. Then we cranked a little purple here. Trey McBride, George Kittle, and uh, quarterback <coughs> Tyler Murray to stack with McBride. But uh, I I actually did. It's funny because I'm going to say, like, I think this is unique, even though I, I did this on the stream on Wednesday with the Badge Bros, where we did McBride, Kyler here. But because Kyler's ADP is on the complete opposite side of the board, I actually think that there's not going to be quite as many 
McBride Kyler um, stack pairings as you I'm might otherwise sure. think. Yeah, because they're just not correlated. It feels weird to reach over Burrow and Dak for Kyler. Yeah, but like, yeah, that you, did feel weird. You stacked my first there. draft, and sure. I didn't feel comfortable taking him over. I was like Kyler over Joe Burrow. <laughs> it does feel weird, but it's a seventh round, so it's not that big of a deal. No, it's not, and like he could have more upside than Burrow. Like it's that's not really that crazy. Well, especially spot. if McBride has the year we need, right? With his yeah. rushing, like Kyler's definitely – he's not dead. We also – we did crank purple, so we do have to credit uh, Crack Rock for coming up with cranking purple. Uh, Crack Rock does demand credit for anything he invented, <laughs> like <laughs> McCarthy going to the Vikings. So make sure you guys are giving Crack Rock his flowers. Speaking of nice. West Coast Kane and Crack Rock are our <laughs> two favorite. Do you think when the Vikings trade up for J.J. McCarthy and select him at number five that they are going to have to credit Crack Rock for that move? I think they might as well just put a 400-meter track around Mar-a-Lago for the victory laps that Crack Rock is going to be doing. Crack Rock's going to be DMing us like, to come on the draft stream for sure so we can, <laughs> so we can celebrate. Well, the but, whole cranking purple thing has really come full circle because now he's talking about cranking purple in relation to like Vi- the Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> uh West Cocaine uh then double taps two quarterbacks hard to get any stacks in when you only have one wide receiver uh but Jordan Love Brock Purdy there All right we're about <laughs> I, don't, to I don't really understand it at the end. So <laughs> the top of not my preferred way of doing it and the top of Pat's ranks it, are is Najee Harris here there's Eckler Javante They're going to run the ball man <laughs> they're going to run the ball um, Gretch, what do you like? Not don't ask him what he I, likes. What I don't like. Really yeah, do. that was the wrong question. Well, that, you gotta you, you gotta just yeah. run the clock down until Najee Harris gets auto picked. <laughs> you can't even put him in the queue. I grabbed two oh. at the last second to. Oh. Start <laughs> I thought we were week. kicking. I'm kicking the can down That's the fine. road. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, I thought we were going. I I mean I was saying that I thought Najee really did make sense at this point in a zero RB build. I, in the end of the I, eighth round. Well, there you go. I will also say AD and Xavier aren't coming back. So if you want one of those guys, this is also the chance to take them. What, okay. what are the running backs that we're looking at now that he went? Yeah. I would probably I go Javante here. We're, yeah, we're, I could do Javante. You're in decent shape at receiver. He's a pretty okay. nice running back one. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm good with him for sure. This is a good price on him too. I'm curious, like, what are your guys' takes on Javante? I've I've struggled with him. It was like part of the thesis played out last year. He got the workload and then just didn't seem to have the efficiency that got us all excited in the first place. He didn't, and uh, I think Jaleel McLaughlin, it, it, McLaughlin is pretty interesting. Um, they're probably going to have a committee. They don't have a quarterback. But I think they probably end up getting, like, a Bo Nix or something, and – they run the ball a fair amount and you know, it's going to be a fairly well-designed offense. So to get Javante Williams at like, you know, what we were paying for Brian Robinson last year. I mean, the bar is not high for what he has to do at that price to, to be a value pick. So and he, he was coming back from the multi-ligament knee, knee tear, which we knew and Peyton stuck with him. And I think that's a key. He's still young back. They threw to him a ton they like they gave him the most routes and and then also they all like, their running backs a ton. They they built the offense exactly like the old Saints offense with Drew Brees, where it's like we're going through the backs. Javante's targets per out run, which isn't a great running back stat, but they were absurd. It was like over thirty percent. It's probably the highest for any running back. He uh, even even high like P Ryan was the next highest on the team, and he was like twenty four percent. None of their receivers were over twenty percent. The two running backs were like way, way up there. Um, you you have to expect that they're still going to throw to the backs a good amount. And the fact that um, Javante got a lot of routes and then also was even higher than like P Ryan, it was like they were intentionally trying to get him the ball in space in a passing game a lot. I just I think the usage is interesting, even if the efficiency wasn't there. That there's still like a chance that the second year removed from the injury, the efficiency comes back, but that the usage we can kind of be comfortable that Peyton was like interested in, in him you know what i mean yeah yeah and i mean like look if he was going in the sixth round i'd be like God, what are we doing 
Right. But the, but the right. ninth round is just so different. You know what you he, need. He is a guy too. Um, this is, this doesn't pertain to this contest, but, but I think after the draft, he's an easy candidate to get pushed down further because of the running backs. Like he's kind of the amorphous dude, you know, the, the Trey Benson's and the Jonathan Brooks that hit the nut landing spot. Like they're flipping him in an instant. Um, for sure. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him, um, you know, round, round and a half later, but that doesn't change where he's going in here. But I mean, that would be like, if you were getting 10th, 11th round, Javante Williams, the pretty clear 1A back on the Broncos. I mean, that's, you want to be in on that. That's, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Like that, it's like Javante <clears throat> yeah. Williams or Zach Moss. Like, give me Javante. He's still, Javante Williams is Amir White. Like, Javante Williams. He's still yeah. only 23. He's one of those guys that came in at 21. He's played three years. He turns 24 next month, to be fair, but it'll be his age 24 season. It's not like he's super old. And again, like, you know, had the really bad knee injury in 2022, played through it last year and stayed healthy. Hopefully he can build up his like leg muscles better this off season. Cause his ligament is in, in, intact. You know what I mean? Like that's why I think part of the year two stuff is like, he can work out harder this off season, right. you know? And the multi-ligament yeah. thing, like, you know, at the time it was like, this is a bigger deal than like the Brees Hall injury. Like it was a multi-ligament tear. Like we should expect him to be coming back yeah. slower. And then he comes back slower and it's like, I'm well, so fuck, this excited is to be wrong. I said there's no way Xavier Worthy oh, makes yeah. it back, and he does. Gratch, can Let's I entice it. you on this? Yeah, yeah. Especially, I mean, have you seen the photos of Mike McDaniel with Xavier Worthy? You know, no. we got the Tua all of a sudden. Oh, speed. baby. Oh, baby. He's fast. <laughs> McDaniel likes speed. Um, uh, so let's just keep love, taking rookies, right? I love Jonathan Brooks here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anything it, else? The you question, guys? I guess we're just going to – we're going to end up feeling, I think, a little bit weak at running back because he's not going to give us much in the early season. But I still think we do it and we just, you know, find like we're going to have to get a Gus Edwards or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. That type yeah. of guy. Yeah. That's fine. Um, And we don't have. How early does Raheem Mostert go? He He's like, he goes around the, the Connor range usually. 93. Okay. Yeah. I think that's a low key spot for a back to land or I don't know if it's low key. I haven't listened yeah. to a lot of draft stuff, but yeah. Don't you feel like they could try to pair someone with a chan and kind of like move on from most a little bit. Yeah, I think they could. Yeah. It's, just, it's not... just not really that great of a running back class. So yeah. You know, the, so our squad here, uh, we got, Kyler and Tua, Kyler stacked with Reek, uh, or sorry, Tua stacked with Reek, Kyler stacked with McBride. We got two running backs, uh, Javante, John <clears throat> Brooks, along with Reek. Uh, we have Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Rome, Adunze, Xavier Worthy at 119, and then George Kittle also at tight end. Um, so we we don't have to force so, anything else with QB and tight except, end. Except, uh, yeah, with QB and tight end. We do have to force uh, Short King Summer with Greg Dorch. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> Uh, short king spring that's right the uh yeah the let's see so west cocaine did feather in one other wide receiver Cortland sutton but then grabbed his third qb trevor lawrence uh super shorty wants us to check out her team here he's got a anthony richardson to josh down stack a jared goff to amon Ra and laporta stack very nice by the way, shout out to Super Shorty. Uh, if if you guys haven't checked out the article she wrote on Rashi Rice, I uh, highly recommend that. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Very nice, and that's that's a free piece, right? Anyone can check yeah. that one out online. Yeah, that one's completely free. And uh, she she couldn't. Who who came up with the title? Let me know how the sausage got made. <laughs> God damn it, Steph. <laughs> I think I might have tweaked it. But you didn't like the pun? No, it just it, it hurts. It's it's you know. Yeah. It's, Any it's reference to Sky Moore? Yeah. It's the sickest fucking name, fucking name ever. And now yeah. it's just a no. Yeah. The punchline. That was the her. She, fucking she, name she, uh... the biggest fucking flop. <laughs> <laughs> I just pulled up Arizona's depth chart, and they have Chris Moore over at our lads. They have Chris Moore listed as a starter, a free agent wow. edition starter. 
Michael Wilson, Chris Moore, and Greg Dorch are the starting receivers. Wow. Um, I'm honestly not opposed to handcuffing. In I this don't mind handcuffing at all, at all, at all, because it's not even um, a handcuff. It's a. It, uh, they're both. Well, Ty Chandler's good a good play too, right? I'm I'm fine. I'm fine with either of them. I do think we should probably take a wide receiver with one of the other picks. Let's, let's grab Jaleel. We or, or we can we can do both Jaleel and Ty if uh, better doesn't take. I'm fine with that too. I'm fine yeah, with going receiver. I don't, I don't have strong opinions here. I just I thought, think, like, behind Aaron Jones, like, Todd Chandler's a pretty solid, like, 0 B ish 12 13. Ah, there he goes. Okay. Build-wise, I, I, I think Chandler fit better. Yeah. I was kind of um, thinking that, too. Like, he's going to have a role. Aaron Jones isn't going to get 300 touches. I, I also don't mind some of these other rookies. I mean, I've been taking Lloyd and Braylon Allen. Uh, yeah, I'm good with either. Too. Um, I'm good. I, I, I open for whatever. Whatever you like. Roman you Wilson's also a- pretty pretty nice if you want that receiver. Let's uh let's just grab uh Marshawn Lloyd here. I think because we I have literally Marshall don't know guy, anything about these rookies. I, I, have, I, I haven't know. looked at them at all. Marshawn Lloyd's like kind of a like he he runs like um he runs like he's panicked, you know, like he's like <laughs> I gotta get out of here. <laughs> you know, and he's he doesn't. I don't think he's like super structured. You know what I mean? He's not. I don't. I'm a little bit worried that like coaches aren't gonna like love this guy. I mean, we gotta pull up clips, right? Like yeah. this has to be the, yeah. the show where we start pulling up clips. Now I want to see him running like he's panicked. I have to see this. I'm, yeah, I'm pulling like, it up myself. Also, I he's, had to uh, shout out this this uh, this tweet here from Jeff before we went live. You're watching. March Madness. I'm staring at the title screen, waiting for this stream to start. We are not. The same. <laughs> That's fantastic. <sighs> Someone this tweet. Marshawn Lloyd just moves with so much urgency. That's the the polite way to put what <laughs> yeah, Pat just said. That's what I'm saying. People see it. <laughs> yeah. So is he the is he the heir to the I, Isaiah Pacheco? This guy runs like Mad Lib. I think he might be. Yeah. He's kind of in the Jalen Wright mold of like they're both sort of like kind of speedy, did well at the combine, probably like committee explosion back types. Okay. Um. Yeah, but it, like, is it? I'm watching his highlights. Is it just like ultimately too much dancing behind the line of scrimmage for the next level? Yeah, like, it might be a hole. It might be. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know that he's going to impress coaches. That's my concern. With right. Him. He yeah. crushed the combine. Like his RAS score was awesome, um, but yeah, I, he's sort of the opposite of Blake Corum. Like Blake Corum does do all the stuff you're supposed to do. Goes um, straight into the hole. Yeah, he goes straight into the hole. He's not super explosive though. So generally, the Corums win that. You know, of the of the two, uh, you know, right. cohorts, you almost always want to bet on the Corums there. But Lloyd is fun. Mm. So we are up to four running backs. Uh, Javante, a couple of, or we got the Denver backfield and two rookies: Javante, Jaleel, uh, Jonathan Brooks, and Marshawn Lloyd. He's explosive. He's very explosive. Yeah. When he when he does find a hole, he likes gets going. He's a he's a big dude that can move fast. I mean, he's not, I, you he, know, it is a little it, it's a little Kendra Miller esque. There you go. I like that. Um, I was kind of hoping like Michael Wilson would come back for more of our Kyler stack. Oh, we're up. <laughs> yeah, we are up. This this draft. I take a lot of Elijah Mitchell. Um, Khalil Herbert's yeah. also somewhat interesting. Running back does really start to get wiped. Yeah, you, here. I think in our shoes we need to make sure we get at least one one running back here. Do you have any running backs you like here, Grudge? None stand out. I'm comfortable with Mitchell. I mean, I guess like this is this is late enough. I guess I'm afraid that Kyle Shannon is just going to always draft more running backs. You know? Yeah. But. It it's also just tough. Like with our build, like we were saying, like there's not a lot of guaranteed touches <laughs> at, the, right. at this point of the draft. Right. Is there anything that feels that way? Wait, what's Miles Sanders' contract situation? Is he like? He's, he he's going to be the clear number two, I think. I, I was taking a bunch of him earlier. I think Dowdle is the other dude who Dowdle. like will have a role. He's he back will with have Dallas. a role. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. we kind of need that. Yeah, so. let's do that. Yeah, they're going to bring in a rookie or something. They're not going to. It's not going to be a, a clear monster workhorse because there's no one in this class that defines that way, right? Right. 
They're really they did it with Pollard. Like they like to promote their in-house guys that do well. Like he's gonna have a role. Even like, Jonathan Brooks is kind of like a a, a really awesome one A, like an Aaron Jonesy type of dude. I don't think he's like gonna be a true workhorse back. And Dowdle was like fine last year. He was better than I thought he would look as like a player from what you know you'd expect from a guy who was 25 and hasn't barely played any offense. He had seven career touches. The- we could bink the, the Cowboys backfield with Jonathan Brooks and Rico Denver. Oh, I did. I forgot sick. about that. That would be nice. Just all kinds of hand cucking, Denver and Dallas. It would, it would suck, though, if then uh, if Denver and Dallas got the same buy and you're like, oh, cool. Oh, all no. four, four <laughs> running backs are on back. <laughs> this, uh, be because our hero, West Cocaine, really kind of starved <laughs> the beast at quarterback there was also a team out of the three hole that went cousins daniels rogers back to back i do feel good about getting out ahead of quarterback in this draft uh i guess a pretty good value on on drake may pat i know you had your recent piece up about him i know you think this is a smash at, it's a at smash. that pick yeah, yeah I've, i think i might uh, let me see i'm, I'm close to 50 percent drake may in in the big board I assume you're rocking him in both two QB and three QB builds, depending on who the first two is. Yeah, I've I've got 43 percent Drake May. Wow. It's it's not like this dude has. Uh, he's real. He's mobile. Uh, he had like Justin Fields level rushing. And, you know, he's not going to be Justin. Justin Fields took it to the next level at the NFL, but he was very mobile in college. He's got a big arm. He's aggressive downfield. The negatives are stuff like. He's just trying to out, make too many plays and play hero ball. <laughs> Fuck yeah, that sounds awesome. Like that's that's <laughs> how fantasy points are scored. Like I'm, and they're not going to bench him for doing they're that. They're not going to bench rookie. him. Yeah, yeah. So like he's he's going to get drafted probably to the Patriots, which is annoying because you know they don't have any weapons, obviously. But like he's going to start. He's going to score fantasy points because he's mobile in addition to having a big arm. So we're, I mean. He just shouldn't come at a major discount to Jaden Daniels, who I think he's a much better prospect than. Um, and he does. 30 so picks I, I after. Yeah. This one. I, I like Daniel. Like, I think Daniels is someone we should be mixing in as well. But if you're going to give me that kind of discount, I'm just going to end up with a ton of May. Which mm-hmm. is what you just said he's likely to go to New England. That's the fairly strong consensus now that Daniels is going to go too. That seems to be the consensus, yeah. Interesting. Is that all because of the Mariota signing? I know right after Mariota signed, it was like, oh, because he's a similar style as a backup, then it probably means Daniels. But is, there's got to be other stuff going on that are leading people to that, right? I don't know. It's just I, I, I kind of am just like following the market on on this, and all the odds have shifted. So it's like Daniels is a got favorite it. now. So I guess he's the favorite. You know? Yeah, that makes sense. We're on the clock. Uh I'm turning to Gretch because I do. I've got Jalen McMillan fever these days. Okay. I don't even love Jalen McMillan, but we could take him. I mean, also, he, he could be all right. I don't think he's going to be a great NFL player personally, but we need to take some upside stabs here. Um, we're at we're at six running backs, six wide receivers. Um, we got to six running backs. Holy shit! Yeah, we we cranked. We had six straight okay. in a row. We needed um, to, but I, I feel good but about. But is where there we're another at. wide receiver? Jermaine uh, Burton. Is, if I mean, obviously Noah Brown has some appeal, but um, and we have Tank Dell, so we're already betting on Houston. But they could add my someone. God, the Marcus Robinson is on the chart right now. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> um. This uh, Jermaine Burton. Right. I think if we if we want a pure upside crack, he's a deep threat. Uh, I mean, I you could go second round. Okay. There's not a number of rookies that is too many for us, is what we're learning, and I'm very yeah. comfortable with it. I freaking our our receiver room is Tyreek, two year two guys that need that didn't run full route shares in year one, like need to actually put together a full season, and four rookies. <laughs> and we're yeah. right back. We were where we need to be, guys. We are in great position. I do feel like it's a decent if you're. I mean, I do this regardless of my construction, to be honest, but. Um, not all the time, but I, I'll. This isn't only because of this construction, but if you're doing bully tight end, you're probably going to get some flex weeks out of that second tight end, and oh, so like yeah. it makes it a little less painful that you know Jermaine Burton's probably not scoring that many points in week three. 
Yeah. yeah. All we need is Trey McBride and George Kittle to both smash for the first month, and we're in great position. We are here. Uh, West Cocaine did take a fourth. West Cocaine is a fascinating individual because he, they also took Jalen Polk and Malachi Corley and then came back and hit Derek Carr as the QB4. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's that's a QB4? QB mm. I can't think of a less interesting QB4. Derek Why? Why? <laughs> Look at Why? this team. It is just like fucking oozing with just alpha, I know ballingness. I mean, wow. it is just incredible. And Dalton Schultz. <laughs> he heard about I think I think Wes, are you watching? I think he heard Pat say Dalton Dalton Schultz is the last tight end I feel comfortable with. And he's like, <laughs> yeah, but you're supposed to have one before here. Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Pete, it's uh and we, we do this every year with the rookies that we don't know, but I can help on the UW players. It's Jalen Polk, not Jalen Polk. Okay, Jalen. So it's Jalen McMillan and Jalen Polk. They have Two the same Jalen's pronunciations. Polk. Yeah. Okay. Thank Spelt you. very differently. <clears throat> Do you prefer Polk? Polk? I always yeah. liked Polk. Yeah, I always liked Polk better, um, this, especially this past season in, in college. He's a bigger receiver, more of like a contested catch guy. McMillan's more of a smaller, but good route runner and tested so well. Like, I mean, McMillan's sort of in like the Will Fuller mold. In terms of a player, in, including the drops that everyone hated from Will Fuller, like McMillan will drop passes and it'll annoy the shit out of you. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could see him being good in a way that I'm just not really like. He's a good route runner and he's fast. And if he's in a good system, like there's not a really strong reason why he couldn't do some of the stuff that Tank Dell did last year if he's in the right system, like Tank Dell was, you know. Mm. Yeah, I don't really. I mean, I don't. John, John wanted you to sum sum up. Uh, I would say unreliable, oh, unreliable. Right. Okay. But I mean, he's still like very athletic and and flashy and good. But like, then the word is unreliable. Drops was hurt a lot last year. This nope. is, uh, I guess, this isn't a good time to show you. Uh, where is in my mentions here, uh, Davis? Because I joked we're gonna try to figure out who our next uh, clip is gonna be. And Davis said, mark my words, Jalen McMillan highlight clip by August 3rd. He, he was trying to call it into existence. But it, it doesn't sound like we're getting there if the, these are Gretch's Davis sentiments. Davis is pretty off on Malachi Corley. I haven't been able that, to. That's what I told him. I said, how many guesses are you giving yourself because Malachi Corley ain't happening? <laughs> yeah. I have not gotten there. Is he just guessing like players like he's just like oh here's another rookie I'm he's a tout guess. he just says a bunch of different things and then if the right. one he says at one point was correct that he could victory lap. exactly uh, that's what it feels like <laughs> let's see here i mean it is it's gross we could go vaughn as a bet on the cowboys and just <laughs> three three cowboys. that one too well we don't know where uh, brooks is gonna go yeah 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 two's vaughn is really small though yeah, it's a, it he's is a, the he's short a scat, king right? roster. He's Tariq Cohen. You're hoping it's Tariq Cohen. Unless I hear another name. Um, he's smaller than Tariq Cohen, isn't he? I think he's a similar. Maybe he's an inch shorter. But Tariq was five six, so how, I don't know how much smaller he could be. I just I feel like when I saw Deuce Vaughn, it looked like a child was on the field with NFL yeah. players. When I saw Tariq Cohen, it looked like a small athlete. <laughs> like those are different things. Yeah, he has the, the helmet. He's going to tip over because of the weight of the helmet look. Right. Yeah. Um, we missed out on Dorch, which hurts. Damn. Um, oh, man. Is Michael Wilson there? Is Chris Moore no, there? Long gone. Long gone. Um, I mean, I'm I'm happy to about thrash. About he's, he's kind of an underappreciated receiver, I think. Okay. Works for me. We're up to, uh, oh my God, trailing Burks. To... Yeah. I'm not like, I'm not into him, but <laughs> yikes. Michael <laughs> Thomas, Pat, you said I saw a tweet where you said you're drafting him. I, I mix him in 20th round, baby. I'm mixing Michael Thomas. There's no reason not to take him at this point. I'm like, well, I, I don't just, think he's going to retire. Yeah, he's he pissed, still dude. earned targets on on a per out basis at like a reasonable clip, which is like his thing. And targets matter. It's going to be low eight dot. It's not going to be efficient, but like, there's a lot of places he could go and earn 100 targets. The, I think um, he's gonna be like the Allen Robinson was was it last year? But like maybe it works. 
<laughs> you know, with more like, targets. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Allen Robinson had shown more of a decline on his ability to earn volume. Michael Thomas per route is still like in a fantasy relevant range in targets per route and that yeah. kind of stuff. Could he be like Juju two years ago? Not on the, I don't think he'd go to the Chiefs, but like that kind of like it's mostly bad, but he has a couple weeks. And you're paying the 20th round price tag instead of the seventh or whatever Juju costs. Yeah. It is interesting that he's right next to Odell as uh, Steph notes in the chat. There's some <laughs> interest with Miami in the newsletter today. Ian wrote up how the chargers would also make a ton of sense uh, for him. I could see Odell having a little life again. He, he wasn't bad uh, last year when he was healthy, but they didn't play him. It was so strange. Like yeah. we all thought that they were saving him for the playoffs and then they just didn't. They, I mean, he, they yeah. saved him, but then they kept saving him in the playoffs. The lasting memory I have of him is in that that loss of the Chiefs. They went deep to him from like deep in their own area of the field, needed to get something going, and he yeah. pretty clearly got held. But he was so slow up the sideline that it was like well overthrown, and it was like he's not fast enough to draw a DPI anymore. Like he doesn't have that juice. Mm-hmm. to get to the where the ball is they're just like yeah that's not catchable for you it was like man you're kind of washed <laughs> i remember that yeah. yeah the uh i guess we could use some veteran leadership in this young rookie wide receiver room so think- michael thomas the landing spot i thought would have really worked for him would have been carolina in the same way that i kind of thought deontay worked it was just like you can go and just soak up a ton of targets and it's in division and we sometimes see these teams be like oh yeah that guy used to catch 10 balls on us every time we played him twice a year so i mean honestly but Den- denver if he just goes and it's literally that would make sense michael Th- he gets the michael thomas role as yeah. michael thomas under that peyton okay. did he bash peyton he bashed a lot of people did yeah, he ever yeah, bash yeah peyton? He's, he's been un- pretty unhappy with how things yeah. went down Look at look at when you get to the twentieth round with two hundred thirty six players off the board. The the running back name Frank Gore, Frank Gore Jr., Eric <laughs> Ray, Isaiah Davis, Ronnie Rivers, Emmanuel Wilson. You're you're in third string running back and uh, undrafted free agent rookie territory. I saw Ty Johnson on that list, and then I just see him get drafted here. I he was the one that I liked the most. He was the bottom of the list. It's a good um, guy. Any scroll any, down. Scroll down. I have I got nothing. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not prepared for this. Sky Moore. <laughs> we could we could take uh Slayton, Thomas, Parker. There's guys that should have routes. Um all right, we can do Parker. Parker <laughs> as a yeah. scroll the F down guy. I didn't uh, even know he signed with the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, can we get Julio Jones but one year younger, uh, I think was their thesis. Right, and didn't they get somebody else that, that's fast to take the Quez Watkins role? Did or am they? I thinking of – oh, they, they just got Paris Campbell, but that's not who I was thinking oh, of. Oh, okay. All right, the final squad here, a 2792 build. Uh, we definitely drafted in positional runs. Four straight wide receivers, Tyreek Kill, Rashi Rice, Tank Dell, Roma Dunze. Two straight tight ends, Trey McBride, George Kittle. Two straight quarterbacks, Kyler Murray, Tua. Uh, I guess I, we should have taken Xavier Worthy first, then Javante mm-hmm. Williams, so we could have gone uh, six straight running backs instead it was five. Jonathan Brooks, Julio McLaughlin, Marshawn Lloyd, Eli Mitchell, Rico Dowdle, then uh, went to a UW boy, uh, Jalen McMillan, Jermaine Burton, Deuce Vaughn, Jamari Thrash, and a little veteran leadership in the form of Devonte Parker to round it out. We also got Roma Dunze. We got we stacked the Huskies in this draft. Um, hey, um, if Rome's good, maybe that makes uh, make it make Millen's out look a little better. You know? Yeah. There you go. Cor- you make correlated play? bet that <laughs> they're both very good. And of course, we do have to recap the uh, masterpiece that Wes Cocaine <laughs> was painting. Wes Cocaine. Four quarterbacks, Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, Trevor Lawrence, Derek Carr. Let the record show Trevor Lawrence is, in fact, stacked with Calvin Ridley. Uh, I will <laughs> give them credit. After going five straight running backs, they did fully take their feet off the gas. Uh, it was just Jameer Gibbs, Barkley, ETN, Rashad White, and Kenneth Walker. Just those five. Uh, 
they made up for it with some uh, quantity. Calvin Ridley, Cortland Sutton. Malachi Corley. John Dotson, Darnell Moody, Jalen Folk, Davis Maddock took the wheel for Malachi Corley, Rondell Moore, A.T. Perry, Josh Reynolds, and then what I would consider a slightly thin tight end room of Dalton <laughs> Schultz and Jatavian Sanders. So, I mean, I like if you're going to go third in there, like. if you're gonna go five running backs to start, you do got to hit it with a lot of receivers. I yeah. think some of the receivers here make some sense. I don't understand the tight end room, and I don't understand the four QBs, but otherwise, like, sort of, like, if you don't take the fourth QB, you almost land this plane a little bit. And he I'm, did actually stack Trevor Lawrence with Travis Etienne. That's a that's a real-ish stack that he, he got in there. Does he think Calvin Ridley still plays for the Jaguars? Yeah. That's my question. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to fix this because it, it does feel like the – it's it's one of the lover purdy picks. Um, Need to be, and, and I would say probably the first yep. five picks as well. Well, <laughs> <laughs> while we're fixing things, let me, Pat. It's um, you know we're looking at a house, and one of the like main foundation pieces is just completely wrecked. Right. Like, there's a lot of different things we have to get to to fully fix this house. Uh, <laughs> it's your art. Me and you were trying to paint the outside, and Pat's like, what about the foundation over there? <laughs> <laughs> you built it in a swamp. <laughs> yeah. The uh, Yeah, as producer Nick says in the hopper, uh, this draft was cruising. Uh, Nick noted it started seven minutes into the show and ended at 53, uh, which is – that's like BBM, 18-round uh, well minute times there. The reason I'm hesitant to uh, roast West too are – it actually feels like someone who is trying. Um, yeah, that it wasn't just a full uh phone it in. I don't understand the fourth QB, but other than that, I agree. I think he was trying, and 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 especially when you go away from receiver for the first five rounds, I don't understand why you take QBs in three of the next five. Like, even yeah. if you're gonna do a three QB build, it's it's too much QB capital right there. There's got to be some receivers and some tight ends hit in that range. I mean, honestly, you should be done it too with Jordan Love, Brock Purdy, and five running backs to start. The only chance you've got. I mean, or, weirdly, those maybe those two are the two he shouldn't. It, Trevor Lawrence shouldn't and, have taken. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence and Derek Carr is probably fine, but then you got yeah. a hammer wide receiver. Like, <laughs> who were the wide receivers available? And you could have gotten Dallas Goddard though too. You could have a Goddard Schultz tight end build, which would help a lot. And yeah, I mean, if you took Love and Purdy out, you could have also added like Deontay Johnson. Okay, I love him. We all know that, but. That's a good receiver for this build. A lot of targets, at least like some catches. It'll be like reasonable production weekly. Like that's true. Yeah, that's that's. Remember when like when we were doing? I feel like this isn't as common because people because the rooms are just not as running back heavy as they used to be. But in FFPC, you'd see teams that would do stuff like this. Deontay Johnson was like always their cheat code. That kind of archetype. Mm. It's like I'm just going to take that veteran, underpriced targets. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, interesting, uh, draft here. Otherwise I'm trying to notice any of the other names. Keenan, where did Keenan go in this draft? I've been curious to see where he is. ADP fourth round just before we took a yeah. game today. 45. Who would you rather have Gretch? Uh, if Keenan was there, Keenan or Rome? That's a good question. I, I, I know that DJ Moore is still going too high at least from my liking. I mean, I think between Keenan and DJ Moore, and I, I've talked up Cole Komet a little. I don't think you want to take a ton of Cole Komet because of those two guys ahead of him, but I think he's a meaningful piece of the passing game. He had a good year this this year um, for what their offense was. I mean, I, 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 I guess what I'm saying is I think it's too much capital for the Bears receivers to have DJ Moore – at the two three turn and Keenan there, but I I think, I think Keenan's price is probably overpriced. fine. Yeah, maybe they're both a little. I think they should be closer in price. What do you think about that thing? You think DJ Moore should be higher? I think. Well, I think that they probably should be closer because I think DJ Moore probably has more to fall. Yeah. Um. At least I certainly in terms of like capital, but I think probably even in terms of raw spots. DJ Moore probably is a, a D, like one. DJ more Moore play. strikes me as like a very similar type bed as like the Waddles and the Devonta Smiths now, where it's like you like the talent, 
you know the volume might not be there, but they he can he can still drop 30 points in week 16 or week 17 and just absolutely be the guy you need. Yeah, I think or like a Mike Evans or DK Metcalf. Yeah. That, that kind of guy. A third a third round pick. Cause in the second round, you want you want that single week upside, but you also want a little bit more of a consistent target floor that I, I think I agree with that because I like DJ more quite a bit and he's a lot younger and I have some concerns about Keenan's health, but I would say that I think I, I fully agree with you guys on the efficiency and the splash potential for DJ Moore. I think he's going to be great. I feel a lot more confident that Keenan's going to out target him when they're both healthy and like be the more, more of the volume guy. He's been that guy with every receiver he's ever played with dating back to college. DJ Moore's been a, able to be somewhat target dominant at points, but not like Keenan Allen. And I mean, when a rookie comes in and you have Keenan Allen constantly open, you're probably going to, he actually set a career high in targets per out run last year. He's still doing it. Yeah, he's still stage. good. Yeah. It's really odd that to me that the Chargers got rid of him. Like that doesn't make any sense. doesn't make any sense to me at all. I mean, they are, I, I was writing up, uh, some stuff and just like thinking like did anyone have a worse free agency than justin herbert i mean yeah, it sucks man see this is this is why i think i i keep seeing the the viking side of the jj mccarthy thing that they're going to trade up with the chargers i keep seeing that and i understand why people are saying that from the vikings perspective but the chargers are sitting in a in a spot that is really wide receiver rich in this draft. And they absolutely need to address that after what we're just talking okay. about. They did. So why wouldn't they just take Malik neighbors? Like teams were trading up a few years ago to go get like Jalen Waddle, like, like Miami did that into this range into this 105, 106 range. People have traded up to go get a receiver like a Malik neighbors before. Why wouldn't you stay put if you're, but I anyway, Malik neighbors is maybe like the, perfect wide receiver to pair yeah. with Jefferson because he's he's explosive. He's going to like – he's going to actually like be able to take the top off the defense in a way where I think like Justin Herbert needs someone who's going to actually like, get open. Mm -hmm. like, he's not the most aggressive passer, but he's got an awesome arm. So just like neighbors I feel like would elevate him to another level. I think though that if they get the package they probably will get from the Vikings – Harbaugh is going to be like, I'm trying to fix this defense and fix this offensive line. Like, I can figure out receiver later. Like, I just don't think that's where his head's at. So everyone's got him moving back and then taking either a Dunze or Brock Bowers there anyway, which I'm sitting there going, I would love if a Dunze gets to later that, that spot. Because be I can, I can be... then get excited about a Dunze. You're going to get excited about a Dunze. No matter I know. What, be honest. But if he goes to, like, fucking – the Patriots or something. I mean, the, he's not going to the Patriots, but like some of these landing spots are like, oh, the Giants. I don't want him going to the fucking Giants. Come on, man. That's a pretty good chance he does. Although neighbors probably is looking more likely to be there. The is game. that the biggest buzz kill? Are those the two biggest Patriots and Giants for like these top wide receivers? Yeah, but I mean, like, I, it's not fun, but like, you know, you'll they'll be okay. Like I don't think yeah. the Patriots can ruin Marvin Harrison. The, the like, thing is overpriced too, if if he ends up on the Patriots, but I I know the days of um, cheap rookie wide receivers are are long gone. But you will get a discount on the For landing sure. spot. I, it was the whole reason Garrett Wilson was a double digit pick was because everyone's like the Jets would like. How big of a discount do you think we would get on Marvin Harrison? I that one not big. I think he just drops around from mid second. Yeah, to I agree. Third. I think he drops to the third. If he um, was, if Harrison went to the Patriots, the, the Patriots are going QB. I mean, they have to, right? I, think they are too. I mean, that's the crack rock report. <laughs> the crack <laughs> I also see crack. every time anyone mentions anything else, I see Pat Thorman make some comment about how, like, obviously they're going to go QB. And I'm like, I, I just, I wouldn't want Pat Thorman to be thinking that I'm stupid. So whatever he thinks <laughs> about the Patriots, it has to be what I think. Cause he's like, he's plugged into them. And when he has a strong opinion, he's like always right. Thurman's I love what I love when Pat's fired up. It's yeah. one of the best things. Twitter. They're Twitter's definitely mostly, going QB cause Pat Thorman said so. Yeah. Twitter's mostly just like, there's, there's very little things that I enjoy left on the site and a fired up Pat Thorman is very much one of them. It is definitely one of them. Uh, I mean, I'll tell you. Bullock says, "Can we please get a crack rock appearance pre-draft?" I, I think he's, I think he's too big for us now. And I've, I've seen some DMs. <laughs> I've seen some screenshots of him sliding into bigger shows 
than us saying, hey, you need me to come on and talk ball? So <laughs> I think he might have moved on from a ship chasing. The, the, the bright lights of Mar-a-Lago have uh, turned him into a new man. Hey, I think I'm, I'm pretty confident that we're going to get him to book a flight out to uh, to Vegas this year. He, he won't come, but I think we <laughs> get him. Come, no, he <laughs> yeah, uh, he will it. purchase the insurance on it to make sure he can easily weasel out of it. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we, we're not going to be able to do a full second draft tonight. Uh, sorry, Brady. You I want to do a rookies and sophomores? We could maybe squeeze in a rookies and sophomores depending on uh, Gretch's schedule here. I got a I don't know how long that takes. You guys can fire it up. I might have to bounce. I got my daughter has a yeah, a little band performance at the top of the hour that we got to leave. I, I mean, how long does it take? It's it's fire 10 up. minutes. 10 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, fire it up. Fire it up. Let's do it. All right, we'll do we, it. We'll we better do, start we'll it. We'll close on a rookie yeah, right. and uh oops. I I I want to do a rookies and sophomores draft, so that sounds that sounds perfect. They're, they're pretty they're yeah. pretty damn fun. All right, let me get this going here and Even though uh, I don't know half the field, all the rookies the sophomores are fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, you have positional scarcity tiers, uh, running back, massively top heavy, and then to a lesser extent, quarterback, and then wide receivers pretty deep. So we're hitting running back at 102. 102, you, I've experimented and gone with the quarterback, but I think you just take Gibbs. You get into a tough spot when you do that. Yeah. Yeah, the spot you can get straight up locked out is quarterback, but you can build with you with if you take Gibbs, you only have to take three running backs, and that's nice. So it like unlocks a roster spot for you. But like, look at this, Gretch. So you go Bijan, Gibbs, H. Oh my God, Chase Brown is five. Spears and that. Whereas you look at wide receiver, you go that far down, you're at Zay, yeah, you're at Rome, you're at Reed, Jordan Addison's down there, yeah. Yeah, it's um, way deeper. Right. Yeah. So one format games. in the history of fantasy where wide receiver is actually deep. The the other <laughs> thing that'll happen with quarterback is like you'll get Stroud, you'll get Richardson, and then Caleb Williams. So often if you're the fourth, you can double tap Drake May and Jaden Daniels is something that generally is possible too, which doesn't feel that bad to where I haven't. Oh, we get a ooh, Stroud ooh, or a Richardson. We get Stroud or Richardson. It's really it's big. Rare. Yeah. That's rare. That almost never happens. That's what I was hoping would happen, and I don't know that it almost never happens, so now it's I'm even so more excited. Rare, <laughs> I yeah, have the, no idea oh, yeah. that this is rare. I'm so Stroud, excited. Getting Stroud here is so nice. Yeah. And then maybe he's got to go ass. QB at the turn. We he's could get got, Tank. Yeah. He should go. The, the rational Caleb. move here is to go uh, Caleb. But we'll see. I mean, frankly, if we get Caleb here, that's we get Caleb, cool. then we get two quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah, this is a really enviable spot to be in for us. Mm. Boom! Okay, oh wow. went neighbors. neighbors. Yeah, that's wow. wild. So we get the Stroud Tank stack with wow. Gibbs. Very rare. Looks rare. Looks rare. What's uh? What's Warner always do when he gets like these really good starts? He's always tweeting. Is it just the the GM? Little GM, little GM, yeah. GM, GM. Got to get a little GM out here. Yeah, yeah. We can we can get a, a GM on the timeline. Uh, all right. Yeah. So the Richardson drafter goes Caleb. Hot oh, chili. These guys are definitely playing chicken with quarterback. Oh, they go man. Florida. Oh man. I mean, we can. Do we you almost, like Daniels over May? Honestly, in this spot, I take May because I, I like May like, more. I feel like May's. I, want. I feel like Daniels has more risk to like hurt himself. He invites contact, more yeah. potential risk to yeah. get benched just because of like play style and Justin Fields comps and stuff, like vague Justin Fields comps. So do I we, like May better? Do you think this is a two QB uh, bill? Like, I think you could rock solo Stroud. Just throwing that out there. No, I think we grab May. Because I mean, I'm fine you're, also, with it, but... you're giving up a lot of leverage opportunity to to like get in a low on Stroud to the final if you only get that's a good point. That's a good point. You want to make sure that you're making the most of that. And it's I guess 16 final. So oh, it took like, around. I thought um, it was QB QB. I mean, Brian Thomas and Addison. I mean, when you get this start, you probably just played 
play the hits here. I think so, yeah. Thomas and Addison, I think, are the best picks. Unless you – okay. Do you do you like someone more? No. I was going to say, would you consider taking Spears or Chase Brown because of how gross running back gets? Do you just take the receivers? Yeah, I just think, like, when you look at this tier, like, down yeah. to Arbs, Jalen Wright, like – I, I mean, we only have one receiver. We have two quarterbacks out there. Yeah. When you take the quarterbacks, you still got to get your receivers somewhere. Like, yeah. I like that. That's what we should have done. Thomas over at I guess, oh, because the Vikings have Sam Darnold playing quarterback now. God, it's such yeah. a different world for the Vikings. I know. I, I think, think we're going to get one of the <coughs> backs coming back, maybe. So we'll see. But mm. man, JSN and Addison both. It feels uh, maybe not. A lot oh. so he didn't, but I I take Trey Benson a lot here. It's like a you guy like, like Benson with, over Brooks. I do yeah. in this format because there like there's not running backs you can hide behind. You can hide Brooks behind. You need the points. Hmm. Yeah, I don't mind that. What's what's why is Brooks a late like slow starter? Is he hurt or something? He tore his ACL in November. Got it. Yeah. This uh, Oakland Kentucky game is wild. Kentucky's about to get upset in the first round. Didn't I hear something like in the Ken Palm that Kentucky was like top ten offensively and like outside the top hundred defensively or something crazy? Um, they aren't that wild, but they're. Oh yeah, no, no, sorry, they are that wild. That's that's exactly right. Yes, oh, they're they're worried. fifth offensively and 109th defensively, and those are the types of teams we that could often... go Brooks now and be done. Yeah, if you don't think – I guess it would be if you think AD is in his own tier or if he's close enough with these guys to just grab the best running back. Because I do think Brooks feels like a slight tier ahead of these other running backs. Me too. And we have Gibbs and Benson, so I feel like well, we, we could go Sharbs or something. Mitchell? I, I don't well, – you guys know better than me. I don't know. Brooks is really fun. If he's, <clears throat> if he's healthy down the stretch, I think he's pretty clearly the best running back in the class. It's just Brooks has a chance to – land on the chargers and or cowboys and be that lead back in a way that sharps doesn't without an injury that i think makes him a pretty fun click that makes sense when you said the acl i'm like well we only have three running backs in this format and i want our guy to not have an acl problem <laughs> right <laughs> yeah we're gonna crush it run we're like only three teams are gonna be good at running back because there's only three good running backs in the whole pool yeah and we are one of them which so This team is really fun. Yeah, it is. Uh, 80 Mitchell. Oh, yeah. Mitchell. <laughs> um, now we can kind of just do whatever we want at wide receiver. I sometimes take Lad in this spot because Lad's going to get out there and run routes and be fairly reliable. Like he fits yeah. with, with a Brian Thomas pretty well. Or Brock sure. Bowers, I just noticed. Yeah, you have him lower. I, yeah, I just because of the tight end thing. Oh, I was. I actually was. I didn't see his ranks. I was looking down or the ADP. I was looking down and I was gonna gonna say Bowers for just for like draft capital and everything. Isn't he gonna play quite a bit? And It'll, what if he yeah. did land with the Chargers? Like that well, would be a, a Sam Laporta rookie year. Yeah, yeah the, Daniel Raz did a strategy article for this, and he was just pointing out the tight ends generally go too close to what they go in the big board when you have a tight that end. That makes position. sense, yeah. Yeah, but it's I would a wide receiver argue slash tight end. Yeah. yeah. At this point, and, I mean, I, I think it'd be fine. Mm -hmm. The other one that looked decent to me was uh, – actually, we close that out because I don't remember yeah. who it was. It was – oh, Dontavian Wicks, I think, is a, a pretty solid yeah. – he was had a good rookie year, and they're going to keep – I don't think they're going to not use him. Do I don't think they're going to add. Brock or oh, – I think Bowers. Should, by, by ADP, Bowers. we're getting another guy that makes this team. Yeah, yeah, Bowers. But, yeah, I, I like Wicks, Wicks could even right. come back potentially. Wicks He's usually like is available yeah. in the 11th. But I, I think he's a good fit because I, I think he'll have his games. Like, he's going to play. He's going to run routes. And, like, wide receiver's not super deep for us. We have a bunch of upside rookies. But, like, yeah, he like makes as opposed to Mims. Like, I think Mims is good, but Mims is a little bit riskier to me. I, like, Wix feels like a higher floor to me. The move I do with Mims is I try to get – and, actually, this has gotten harder because Bo Nix's ADP has risen, but uh, 
I, I like to do Jaleel, Marvin Mims, and Bo Nix, and just hope oh. I'm <laughs> going. Like, you Stack know. the Broncos. Yeah. You can also do that with J.J. McCarthy and, and Jordan Addison. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm good. I'm great. I'm good you to grab, grab Wicks? Uh, Wicks. Yeah. I like it. I feel like this tier, like I would not be surprised to see the Franklin, Keon Coleman, Xavier Leggett, Roman Wilson, Pierce all just like all jumbled up in basically any order of draft capital. We're just firing receivers now, right? So if we want to try to, yeah, let's. Uh, there's we one guy out. We can save him for the final round, but Troy Franklin here is pretty sweet. I know it. It, it was a yeah seven a picks pass, combine, but yeah, I yeah. like that. Let's do it. Do you have any Franklin uh, thoughts since they they were playing the Huskies and stuff? No, not really. I should have better Pac-12 thoughts than I do, but I don't watch a lot of the like other college games because it's like, I mean, Saturday is one of my rare like sort of days off. I watch the Huskies and then I kind of don't watch. I'm like researching for Sunday usually, you know, during football season. Yeah, I don't watch a ton of college ball other than the Huskies. So you see him once a year, but like I don't know that he's an NFL prospect. I'm not like paying attention to the Ducks roster. Right. We actually played him twice, um, but nothing like stood out. I don't. I don't know anything about him. The guy I, I wanted to float was Demario Douglas, with the idea that we we do have May land in New England, but here? Keon Coleman, Roman Wilson, oh. there's like a ton of dudes we could take as rookies too. Demario Douglas is a great pick in the last round of this. Holy shit! Why yeah, does he play? Um, because Pat he, doesn't have him ranked. Yes, I do. <laughs> do I not? No. It's bad. Pat dictates the whole market. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I, he's I, like their I, wide receiver one, like legitimately. Yeah. Well, I did a fun one the other yeah, day where I took, I did the May and Daniels, and then I took Pop because I'm like, one of his quarterbacks is going to be those guys. So you like yeah. guaranteed the stack. Well, look, when you guys fill a tournament in three days and I, I send out the ranks once and don't think about them again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's I, I may have forgotten to add Demario Douglas. That's yeah, amazing. it is. It is wild. We're using software is a seventy-seven percent filled. <laughs> um, crazy. We stuff. got one amazing ship chasing team though, and that's yeah. Let's get this marked here. That's fun as hell. Um, I got to run. It, yeah, uh, we'll we'll power this whole thing down. Uh, thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, obviously, you got all kinds of ranks and stuff over on Legendary Upside. Check out that. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, piece from Pat as well. Steph's article about Rashi Rice, rookies and sophomores ranks, uh, and an article from Daniel Raz, bunch of good stuff. Check out my video over on the Deposit Kingdom channel. Ran through 10 different tips for the big board. Uh, still plenty of time to draft in that. And Underdog also draft dropped uh, $100 three max, uh, the biggest board, too. So those strategy tips can get you caught up. Who? who why did they decide to do that? Anyone ask for that tournament? Or? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, I, I I asked for a little favor and uh, Hope and Numi uh, made that happen. Thank you guys. And uh, Gretch, Stealing Bananas, Stealing Signals, anything else coming up from you? Nope. Not like it, right. not imminently. I'm going to go to a, a band concert tonight and that's what's coming up for me. <laughs> Enjoy. Enjoy. We I'm will... adding Demario Douglas to the rankings right now. So if you want to, you want to draft off the ones with Demario Douglas, check the site in about five minutes. Pat is writing a sternly worded message to Daniel Raz. To and myself. It's, it's, it's <laughs> no, no. Right I, I went rogue. <laughs> we weren't going to provide these. And I was like, I'm having fun. Here's some ranks. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, guys. Have a good night. We'll see you next time.